While it can appear to be a daunting task at first, installing a magnetic flex plate to your printer's bed can be done simply and easily with some basic tools and prep work. If your printer bed is already installed in the printer itself, disconnect any wires and remove it from the printer. This will be much easier to install outside of the printer itself. And of course, if your bed hasn't been installed yet, simply don't install it. Rubber gloves are also essential in my opinion, as the rubber gloves prevent any oils on your hands from getting onto the bed and contaminating it. Now it is easier to install your flex plate magnet before you install your heater pad, as this will allow the bed to sit flush. However, in my case here, I already have the heater installed, so I am using some spare extrusions to give me a flat surface to work on. Now, before you attach anything to the bed itself, you do need to ensure that it is perfectly clean and free of any residue or remnants from a previous bed surface. This bed had previously been equipped with a PEI sheet glued to the bed itself. I simply removed the PEI and then using Goo Gone and isopropyl alcohol, cleaned off any remaining residue of the glue. Now, even if this is a fresh bed, you do want to ensure that there are no oils left on the bed itself. So what I recommend is using a slight abrasive pad, such as a Scotch-Brite pad and some isopropyl alcohol, give the bed a good wipe down. The Scotch-Brite pad as well also acts to slightly scuff the surface of the bed. And I find that this gives the adhesive glue much more bite to the bed itself. Now, when ordering your flex plate and magnet, I do recommend that where, if possible, that you order a magnet that is slightly larger than your bed itself. So in my case here, I have a 300 by 300 bed and I've ordered a 305 by 305 magnet and flex plate. The reason for this is while size for size does work, when you have an oversized magnet, this allows for some forgiveness when it comes to aligning the magnet on the bed as you can trim off any excess. If you order a size for size magnet for your bed, you just have to take more time when it comes to installing and aligning your magnet to ensure that it is seated evenly on the bed itself. Now, when installing the magnet, what I do is I remove a strip of film at the bottom. So I have a starting point and then once lined up, starting from the middle, I gently push it down. And then what I use is a plastic uh, putty knife to gently push the bed down. And you're always working from a point that has been pushed down outwards. You do not want to trap air pockets. And then you slowly peel away the backing as you lay the magnet down, pressing it onto the bed surface as you go. And another thing to keep in mind is you do want to wipe down your magnet as well before installing it. You want to make sure there is no lint or dust or anything on the backing that could fall onto the bed and get trapped underneath the magnet while you are adhering it to the bed. Normally what I do is I actually have a light fan going in the background simply to ensure that no dust or in my case since I have a dog, dog hair lands on the bed while I'm installing anything. Take your time, there is no need to rush. 
if you make a mistake now, it'll be much harder to fix than if you just take your time and do it properly from the start. Be cautious near the end as I've had it happen to me before where I've accidentally pulled off the last remaining paper and I've left an air pocket. Now if you are lucky, if you do leave a small air bubble, you can pierce it with a pin and hopefully that will allow the air to escape and you can push it flush. But again, taking your time and ensuring you don't have an air pocket to begin with is the easiest and simplest way of doing this. After your magnet is installed, using a sharp knife or scalpel, cut out the holes that you need for screw access for mounting the bed. And after the front work is done, flip your bed over and then trim off any excess magnet hanging off the edge. After your magnet is installed, you can go ahead and install your heater mat in the exact same way if that has not already been done. And then you need to attach your ground, which we use a tapped hole for. Now for the temperature sensor to prevent a runaway, we used to mount this to the bed itself. However, I've taken to using a new method where I use some high temperature gasket sealant. Now this is the same stuff that I've used to make a sock for the mosquito hot end. And I'm gonna use this to attach the thermal cutoff directly to the heater mat itself. This way, if the heater mat does fall off due to the glue failing, the temperature cutoff switch will still be attached to it and should still do its job. So I simply using a dollop of the high temperature gasket sealant, I fix it to the back of the 
heater itself and using a weight to hold it down, I let it cure for the recommended amount of time. Now, after everything is installed, what I do recommend doing is putting some weight on your bed itself to ensure that the magnets are properly adhered to the surface. This can be some old books, some spools of filament, anything that will let you push some weight evenly onto the bed, ensure that your heater mat and magnet are firmly affixed. What I did here is I stacked up some weights and I let it sit for approximately 24 hours before installing. And then once everything's ready to go, install your bed into your printer connect up any wires and other connections for ground your thermistor and the heater mat itself and then install the flex plate and remove any protective surfaces. Now, as you can see here, we do have a small bubble on the bed itself, and I'm just using the point of my X-Acto knife here just to pierce it to let the air out. And I find after a few heating and cooling cycles that most of the air does work its way out of these small bubbles under the PEI surface. Now this is a energetic flex plate and magnet. As you can see, one side comes with the textured surface and one side came with the PI sheet. I do like having the option to choose. And then of course, once you have installed your flex plate, uh, if this is an existing printer that has already been configured, of course you are going to have to reset your Z offset for your nozzle. So bust out that little piece of paper that we all have floating around somewhere. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it has been informative. If you would like to see more videos such as this, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below. And also don't forget to join the Voron Discord. There's an amazing community there full of people that are willing to help you with your build. Thank you and have a great day.